When I was very young, I rebelled against the social order so much that one day I decided to leave the city and walked to the pig farm nursery, took off all my clothes, lay down in the pig shit next to a friendly mother's soul, and joined in feeding at her teat with other piglets. But then, after an endless amount of time, I heard a velvet voice in my head. Give the world's people another chance. So my mind lifted my nude, white, smelly body, carried it to the little local village pond, washed the pig shit off and sent it back to the rolling time. Half century ago, a lad is walking into the biggest factory in Czechoslovakia producing heavy machinery. Five hours, thirty minutes after midnight, the sun is still sleeping. No time for showers streaming with thousands of others through the factory gates. The real hell of a steel foundry welcomes me. Eight hours shifts for the 40,000 employees having millions of pictures of nude men's and women's Bodies inside their stinky factory lockers. In blues rhythm, strong men shoveling chemicals into the muzzles of gigantic Siemens Martin steel furnaces. The sounds of exploding iron or are ripping my ears. Dreams and any concepts of God are evaporating in the real reality of the extreme temperatures of the furnaces. Everybody has to use a different set of lungs to breathe the sharp stench of the melting ore and leave their pig clean once at home. <laughs> Sweat is running like, like small streams down the gutters of my back. Fat women laughing at the workers lost erections, sitting like cakes in the boxes of their cranes, while moving huge red steel ingots above all our heads. A 
Romani man with big biceps calls himself the Foundry Negro. Laughing at absolutely insensitive and cruel jokes. The draft beer inside the foundry carried in big ceramic jars clinking against yellow teeth. Dark bread sandwiches with greasy pork wrapped in communist newspapers eaten while sitting on dusty metal chairs. The lack of my friend Sack being flattened by an ingot. Fast, they have to cut his stump with an axe so that he won't be broiled. The roasted skinned dog on the skew rotating above the cooling ingot. The sounds of million pound hammers forging ingots is shaking the oil soaked ground. <laughs> bang, 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 bang is traveling through my brain while I am trying to fall asleep after each factory shift. During that sludgy winter with black snow lying on the streets, I need to upgrade my raw apartment. The horrible foundry beasts are all knocking on my door with their mind dirt and broken nails and they are installing water pipes, heating kitchen and bathroom for days. They laugh at money offered them and scream at me, burn it in the fucking cremation ovens. I knew I could count on them. They were salt of the earth. Authentic, offensively vulgar, dirty, smelly, but nutritious. The opposite building block of a triangle. Cambridge spotless fake perfume leftists dancing on the tips of their sensitive talks. The offense is removed from the inclusive air. The schedules of their psychoanalogists are filled up to the top. Each word is processed by weakest state of consciousness. Language is narrowed into the boarded up entrance to the brain's slaughterhouse. They want to call for the criminalization of our thoughts and require us to put dots into the words already popping out of our brains. They love love 
and politically correct correctness. Authenticity smells of unacceptability for them. <laughs> melting when hearing about atheistic science, cancelling the culturally uncomfortable past is so orgasmically pleasurable for them, reassuring each other of their pretentious solidarity and respect based on the perfectly organized phone planners in their hands. Atomization helps. Depending on your individual responsibility to build your apartment, they say. The bank's loans will help you and you can exploit and pay some undocumented workers to do the labor. They depend on the export of capitalism to keep their leftist bubbles aloft because, because it is not in their faces. It has brought me, 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 a nice computer centered life. Small talks is becoming enormously huge. Driving their glossy cars, steel from them is made by dirty slave labor very far from their cute reality on the other side of the globe. They are giving birth to a new fake generation of pets in their gentrified, lovely neighborhoods and pushing kids out of the horizon. Fucking emptiness. Fuck all of them! Fuck all of those morally decayed snobs judging human beings according to their choice of vaginas and penises while betraying women oppressed by religions. I hate their avoidance of stepping into shit because the smell of shampoo can save them from it. I hate their self-developed entitlement to the cute and safe environment. An endless selection of dishes on their menus in fucking bourgeois restaurants. I hate the imposition of their fucking void and vain lives and values on the whole world. bet I will always be on the side of the dirty workers living in solidarity and authenticity and rejecting fakeness. When I saw the smelly steel foundries of Ohio, I had tears running down my face. Long live the deplorables of all colors of the earth. We need to return dirty and environment killing factories to our communities. We need to see 
that stuff is not produced by using endless perfectly crafted sentences sent by computer clicks. We need to get rid of structured, idiotic, politically correct academic discourse that serves only as a means of job promotion for its parasitic creators. We need to return the foundries to the center of Cambridge so that the students developing their fake empty leftist discourse see and feel with their own eyes and skin the flames of melting Completely nude, I knocked on the same door of the maternity hospital through which my mother passed 66 years ago with me in her arms. I want to go back, I told the doctors assisting in the birth of another David. 